Gee willikers, man, I bid you welcome, greetings, a warm welcome to this video. The year is 2022 AD. It is June 30th, year 2022 AD. If you put a temperature device to measure the temperature of the minute, you'll find that the temperature is extremely high. It has been a very hot minute since I've last uploaded a Cassette Master presentation video. It has been over six months. That is probably the record. What you are watching is a messy bench production. As you can see, the workbench is thoroughly messy for this video because I'm not about to try to clear this whole thing up just to make it look spick and span for the video. I figure, screw it. I'll leave it as is in all of its crazy, messy glory. Also, if you're wondering what microphone I'm using, it is a Sennheiser model MD441N microphone. It's a professional quality microphone given as a gift to me from Speaker Freak 95. A very nice microphone indeed. Had one small problem with it. It was not putting out any signal and I thought, oh, shoot, do, do, do. the element's open, isn't it? The microphone is bad, isn't it? Thankfully, there was just a small enamel-coated wire inside connecting the microphone element to a little coil and uh, other stuff, and that little wire had snapped. It broke. I was able to repair it, and it works beautifully now. And if you're curious, if you take a small flathead screwdriver and carefully remove this plastic little name badge on the back, that'll give you access to a flathead screw that you will then remove. You'll also remove this ring on the bottom here, which has two holes in it. And you can, I stuck a pair of tweezers in there, was able to remove it that way. That way I was able to open up the Sennheiser mic. Now, did I take any YouTube video evidence of that? Nope, none whatsoever. I'm going to switch from this Sennheiser mic to a Shure wireless mic instead. One of these Shure wireless microphone setups here, also a gift from Speaker Freak 95. For a moment I thought I left this thing on like an absolute fool. But thankfully I hadn't. I'm gonna turn this down a bit. This is a little bit on the extreme side. Using this Shure mic now, I bid you welcome to this video. Well, I already bidded you welcome to this video as is. Uh, hello. Huh, getting a call. Hey Zap, welcome to this video. What's going on? Welcome. Hey, what's up? I was wondering if you were uh, working tomorrow. Yes, I am. You are? Yep. Alrighty. I'm a working man. Yeah, you're Should have known I was now. off last Friday, so I worked this Friday. Yeah. I'm yeah. A working man too. I just got to work at the day. Of the Silver Alchemist, like a couple hours Oh, ago. Zap! By the way, uh, check out Zap Aura on Vocal.media, link in the description below. Anyway, um, how's it going? It's going pretty cool, yo. That's good. Um, yeah, I was calling to see if you wanted to hang out tomorrow. Well, I'm going to be working, so yeah. it wouldn't yeah. be able to be until after work. Well, even the level right. that low is like that, 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 that sensitive. Well, anyway, I gotta get going, Zap, because I'm making a YouTube video. I haven't uploaded a video in uh, over six months. Yeah, it's been a hot hour. Hot minute. <laughs> yeah. No, it's been longer than a hot minute. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, Alrighty, good luck with that. Uh, also, uh, do you talk to Isaac about the stories? Uh, about your uh, writing? I have not at this time, but one of these days I will. Man, yeah, you still I love Isaac. Alchemist. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm going to be writing a continuation, so it needs to be 
kind of. Yeah, and maybe uh, viewers, maybe in the future, you'll be able to uh, see videos of my friend Isaac. He has not yet made an appearance, but hopefully he'll be making an appearance one of these days. Anyway. Uh, I also look drastically different now, so. Did you dye your hair or what? Oh, no, 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 just since the last video. Oh, I see. Well, it's been a good while so, since we've uploaded a video yeah. again, so yeah. Well, anyway, right. Zap, I will uh, see you later. All right, I'll let you go. Okay. I'll probably call you back later if I need you. All right. Bye-bye. I was Zap. If you go back into my backlog of videos, I did have them on the air at one point. Well, now we're going to finally show the star of this video here, the whole point of this video. Well, one of the points, the, one of the points is simply that if I don't upload a video within the next 30 days, I will lose the YouTube partnership. I saw that in an email recently and I'm like, oh, a, uh, oh no, I need to, uh, I need to uh, go ahead and get on my A game and upload a video. So I'm uploading a video here of a very interesting tape recorder. It's a Mayfair model FT1024B and um, we'll take a look. <sighs> That's nonsense again. Been a while. Take a look at the nameplate on the front here. You can see it's slightly bent outward unfortunately. Maybe one of these days I'll manage to fix it but it's glued in place and if I try to take this off it's going to be a hard time. So, I'm just leaving it there for now. I like the styling. The front uh, speaker grill has a particular, what's the word, beveled. It kind of goes in like this. It has a cool, uh, cool look to it. Um, so, it's got a handle on the side. It's got a wooden case. Do you think it's one of those machines that only plugs into the AC line that's a semi-portable because a lot of these ones that are a little bit on the bigger side with the wooden cases tend to be that way. Well, this one, thank you thank, thank very much, is battery operated. I got it on eBay and maybe I should have looked for the same model in better condition. This one's not in the best condition. For one, it's missing the battery cover. So I put a piece of foam in place to cover it up. And for two, it's got the bent thing, a little bit of a nick right there, and stuff like that. It's not in the best shape. And I later looked online and found there was two or three of the same model machine for sale elsewhere. So I was kind of like, maybe I should have got one of those ones, but whatever. This was the first one I saw. I didn't know there were others for sale. and thought it was a rather interesting machine and not too expensive. So I went ahead and uh, did my bidding. And it's a battery operated tape recorder. It'll also run, I know I'm swallowing as loud as heck, uh, powered off the AC line as well. Um, but obviously I'm powering it off batteries. Now in this case, I have two 18650s powering this baby. Normally you would run off nine volts, i.e. you would use six D cells, but I didn't feel like trying to come up with the uh, ton of D cells so instead I just um, got uh, a couple of 18650s and running it off of roughly 8 volts now which runs it fine. One of my project ideas is eventually to um, something I call Operation LRI. What I'm going to do is move my studio and my workbench into the living room and also put a couple of uh, sub studios in there as well using some of those sound boards I got from my friend Jordan and um, but and then the space issue is in this room currently is really becoming an issue I'm just running out of places to put stuff in this room it's getting so incredibly cluttered and and uh, close quarters for everything I have to move things from one location to another when I want to sit down and you know I I barely got any room for anything in here so I want to expand into a bigger room <sighs> good night I got the reels and I put them on my you heard 4000 report yes and now I have to go get them dang it dad gummit 
You know, the beauty of this wireless mic is I can still keep walking around. Oh, no, no, but talk with normal voice. So I go around yonder. It's in a different room. I'm a bumbling fool. I got him now. The amount of pressure I got to put on this damn tripod to make it move is unreal. So here's a tape recorder, seen at a distance and an angle because, yeah, hardly any room to get the tripod set up in here. So I want to obstruct your view while I put these reels on here. Just the more obstructed the view is, the better. Now this machine, believe it or not, has tape lifters on it. I.e. it has a thing that moves the tape away from the heads whenever you're not playing or recording. So when you rewind, it doesn't make the heads get worn out and dirty quicker. That was recorded on the U-Her. And that's a full track mono recording in reverse from 7.5. So anyway, um, this machine came with a mic, which is this uh, microphone. If you've ever seen a YouTube video of my Lloyd's Rim Drive Reel Reel Tape Recorder, good luck finding it. That one was uploaded in 2007 using a crappy quality webcam. Oh, wait, I did make a remake of that video, uh, a remake video of that recorder in, I think, 2019 or early 2020. So actually, yeah, that would video too would show it. It has a microphone of the same form factor, but it's not identical though. The one for the Lloyds was crystal, but this one is dynamic. Same case, same style, different element. So we're gonna plug in here. Oh, by the way, to fix this, I had to replace the electrolytic capacitors in the amplifier, and that was pretty much it. Mechanics are still working, and kind of moved the motor so maybe it would track on a better part of the rubberized flywheel. And then there's this quick stop, which is an electrical pause, which turned off the amplifier and motor at the same time. And remote, remote switch did the same. I don't like it when they do that. I want it to turn off just the motor and leave the amplifier running so I can set the level. So I modified it so that the amplifier would be kept on and the motor would be the, the only thing that's turned off whenever you pause it. So with the amplifier on and the motor paused, I started the machine running and I am recording at one and seven eighths inches per second. And I can set my level, set my level here. Testing one, two, three. This is a recording with a uh, good, uh, reasonable recording level uh, using the original microphone. Testing one, two, three. Testing record one, two, three. One and seven eighths inches per second. And um, then what we'll do is, by the way, if you want to take a look at the level meter, um, I don't know how well you can see the level meter here, but. When we run it, you know, you don't have to run it. You just stop it and the level meter moves. Let's zoom in real quick. Here's the level meter right here. When it's in record mode, the level meter moves to indicate the recording level. When it's in play mode, it indicates to show battery. And if it's in the red, the battery is good. Just a little voltmeter, basically. That's not labeled for your voltage. I'm gonna use this remote pauser here. Got the Sennheiser hooked up now. Hello, 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 hello. Probably getting uh, electrical noise from the fluorescent lamps in this recording with the Sennheiser mic. Sennheiser has a nice feature where you can select, uh, if it's set to M, you get, uh, I guess, full bandwidth and you get a lot of bass. If you select S, you get less bass and then between the M and the S, you adjust it. So if I get less space and then I, on top of that, put a high, I'm still set on high pass filter. I thought I set it on full, whatever, whatever. Okay. You can set between like passing all the frequencies or high pass filter. This does not change equalization for one and seven eighths or three and three fourths. It just has one equalization for both speeds. So if you use a high pass filter on the, on the mic 
and I set it to S so that it limits the bass, I can make a better recording at 1 and 7 eighths. First, let's turn off all the lamps to eliminate any electrical interference. Now I'm recording on the Mayfair FT-1024B FT capstan sleeve. Take off the holder on the top for the capstan sleeve. Take our little sleeve. Drop sleeve onto capstan. Screw the thing on the capstan. Capstan sleeve installed. So we get ready for playback. We gotta rewind the tape and all that jazz. And then we'll have to set the speed back. I give up. I'm done. I'm done doing this. I'll do a video on a different machine. Erasing has failed at some point. Don't know what it is that made the eraser fail. But either the head's gone open circuit or we don't have voltage. Didn't used to be an issue at all. Used to erase, no problems, no worries. It would erase just fine, but now that I'm making a YouTube video on this, it's 2.7266 volts. This won't erase anymore. Don't know when it cut out at. But I'm done. I'm Listeners, I, I want to... Sorry for that. Listeners, I want to start out with a fair bit of warning. The recorder, I kid you not, the erasing function has failed mid-recording somewhere around in the three and three fourths tests. I don't know if the head went open circuit or if a connection failed and the voltage to the head happened to go away at that point. I would hope that it was the latter. Without further ado, let's show playback other recordings. I'm going to do something interesting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Sennheiser mic to directly get the playback from the speaker to this mic. I started the machine running and I am recording at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. Testing 1, 2, 3. This is a recording with a uh, good, uh, reasonable recording level uh, using the original microphone. Testing one, two, three. Testing record one, two, three. One and seven eighths inches per second. When we run it, you know, you don't have to run it. Probably getting uh, electrical noise from the fluorescent lamps in this recording with the Sennheiser mic. Now I'm recording on the Mayfair FT one oh. FT 1024B I stopped the camera because enough of that rubbish um, 1 and 7 eighths inches per second S mode on the mic uh, hopefully we have good uh, trackage on the tape here um, it has a monitoring function so I can make it feedback, but it's a quiet monitor, so I had to put the mic up close to the speaker to make it feedback. I burped. If I set the microphone to M mode, there's more bass now. Testing one, two, three. If I pass all frequencies, the bass is even stronger. Now we got high pass and S mode. To limit the bass, to make for better intelligibility, at one and seven eighths inches per second on the Mayfair 
FT 1024B. Now we're going to set this. Oh, at first, let's do one level all the way up. The level is set all the way up with the Sennheiser mic. Now, um, please do me a favor. Take your capstan sleeve and set the speed to three and three fourths. Hi there. I'm recording at three and three fourths inches per second with Sennheiser mic. We're going to put it in between the two modes. Full pass of all the frequencies. Testing one, two, three, Sennheiser mic. This is a recording at three and three fourths inches per second on the whatchamacallit, yada, yada. You already know the model and the manufacturer because I already said it a bajillion times. It's June 30th, 2022 AD. And got to upload a video. Lights are turned off for this recording to eliminate uh, noise because I just have two. AD. Just rewind. Fast forward. You hold this down. It works better when it's sitting on the table. The model and the manufacturer, because I already said it a bajillion times. It's June 30th, 2022 AD. And got to upload a video. Lights are turned off for this recording to eliminate uh, noise because I just have two alligator clips hooked up to the Sennheiser because the adapter that I made to XLR is currently plugged into the sure mixer setup. I'm not about and there the monster comes in. Back and the back monster back. comes in now. The monster starts talking about how the erasing failed on this thing. I'll do one quick recording to see if it was a temporary thing or a permanent thing. So it looks like it was just the electrical connection that failed while recording on the record play switch. Even though I had sprayed it with uh, deoxid, it still managed to, uh, for some odd reason, uh, fail. So, yeah, I do one more recording now. Thankfully, it's going to work now. Hello, hello. Do that again. Your phone, dynamic mic. Yeah, I do one more recording now. Thankfully, it's going to work now. Hello, hello. Okay, so that's that's a huge relief. That's a huge relief, guys. Um, the fact that the erase failure was just a temporary deal. I thought that this blasted thing had, you know, possibly had a head go open circuit. Which would have sucked if that happened. Thankfully, it was just the electrical connection. For some reason, the connection went away, the erasing stopped, and the old recordings were coming through. Um, so, thankfully, um, that's not an issue. You may have noticed this interesting winged-looking deal with a light in the middle of it. Um, the light's burned out, I think. I suppose it probably would come on when powered off the AC line. I tried powering it off the AC line, and it did not come on, so I think it's burned out. The wings aren't there just for decoration, but if you remove the wings, there is an auxiliary input jack underneath. I'm not going to take it off because I don't want to possibly break the plastic. I kind of messed with, carefully took it off earlier on. But believe me, there's a jack under there, and it's an auxiliary level input for recording off the line level, or also getting to the input of the amplifier during playback and using the amplifier of this machine with a different uh, audio source, which is an interesting feature this has. Um, <clears throat> and it's hidden. That's the weird part. So now we're going to use, we're going to show uh, how this performs with music at both speeds. Oh, disclaimer, guys. This music is not by me. That should be obvious. But that sounds one way. Let's try it another way. Yeah, I'm 
Så ger våren över Och på väg mot ett annat land Och jag var magisk liten Och ganska ful Men i min väska fanns toner från mitt uppväxtland inches per second. This is where the speed is set to one and seven eighths. If you can hear me now, I'm impressed. Yeah. is a Mayfair FT 1024B AC bias. I forgot to mention that tidbit. AC bias, reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. The amplifier uses uh, five transistors. The bias oscillator uses six transistors for a total. It's kind of right. Well, the amplifier uses five transistors. The bias oscillator uses one transistor for a combined total of six transistors for this vintage reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from the 1960s. Can we get a sneeze through this thing? Huh? <laughs> now that's a high quality sneeze if you ask me. <laughs> 